before NDI, I think I was always asking myself the question, what next? So UX research, yes, but I mean, there has to be more to it than just doing the research bit and handing it over to clients. So I wanted to be part of designing actual products. Like, let's let's look at it from when it's an idea, let's do the research, let's have the concepts, let's give out an actual product. My next step after that was to do something to do with product design. And I was very much exploring how to learn that. And NDI just provided the best opportunity because it's not just product but service design. There's, there's a lot more than, than just designing you know, an actual product or service. So there's so much more at NDI, what I'm getting at NDI, as opposed to getting that in a university that only specializes in just one um, discipline of design. Before joining NDI, I started my career in interior design consultation. Some of the most memorable projects I've worked on since joining NDI are like Project Moja and Project Twelewane. Project Moja was about creating a marketing campaign for a free internet provider. The client was Brick and one of their super bricks has internet for Matatus. The thing that was exciting about this project was one, it's marketing and it's human-centered design. Those two did not correlate in my head at first. Some of the exciting parts of it were being able to meet people where they are and understand from that dynamic how much they really know. A lot of the time people think, you know, this is not your profession, so you don't know. But as long as you're the one experiencing it, then you definitely know something about it. So learning from the Matatu conductors that this is how to market to our people. They're not marketers, they don't see themselves as marketers, but they give us all the answers. I thought that was a very exciting opportunity. Coming here, I had to unlearn a lot of things that I've been practicing because I got to realize that there's so much more to design and the whole process that is not known to a lot of people. Once I started learning the new techniques, refining what I already knew and getting deeper into um, what, how powerful design is, that's when I started appreciating it. And it's only until recently, a few of the fellows here started working on this Dalberg design project. I got to see how essential what we're learning here and how it's practiced out there is for the whole practice. And my experience has been amazing, just interacting with different people who've been practicing design over a period of time. There's really no one typical day for us at NDA. If we're having classes, we have facilitators and um, the fellows having a three-hour session, which is usually a Tuesday to Thursday. After the session, we usually have assignments and projects, and this includes um, not only the module projects, but true life projects. We have been able to find a path to bridge the gap of the design curriculum and the innovation industry, because it's still really hard to get you know, design leaders or design innovators who can practice full stack designing. It's not only about building a product or service to make it look beautiful, but also going beyond thinking how does it serve your end users, how does it meet their challenges or their pain points and their needs. I worked on a project where we redesigned a game-based curriculum for teaching our mental hygiene management. MHM. What was interesting about it, oh my goodness, everything. I think the demographic that we were working with, so um, young people, kids between nine years and I think 18, 19 years old, uh, young adults. It was, it was very interesting for me because I, think, I feel like it provided a very unique challenge outside other challenges that we discovered. I think for me the most unique thing was it was not an inclusive conversation. What we did is we designed a chart, a round chart. So first of all, the chart was really good because it removed the presence of a power figure. So the facilitator plus the participants would sit around the chart and the chart had a limited number of seats in, in quotes, like just figuratively speaking, seats. So there would, there would be about 30 participants and room for two facilitators. So the ratio now reduced to one is to 15. One facilitator to 15 um, participants. That was really, really cool. I think the other thing that was really interesting about what we did is the chart itself guided the session. So uh, participants were able to follow like that. We are here now. We, we had this really cool um, pizza looking, because the pizza was actually our inspiration at the time. So this pizza looking chart, and there's a session here, and there's one there, and there's one there. And, and if I'm sitting here, I can tell what, what's, what to come after what. It was really interesting. I think the meat of the thing was 
we designed activities to now guide the entire conversation. Initially, it was it was a topic where there's a book I read, you listen, you ask me questions. It was not a very interactive session. So the activities allowed the participants to learn on their own. It was a kind of self-learning session. NDI is an institution that is focused on building multidisciplinary designers with the sole focus of thinking about how we start addressing challenges and problems that exist in the region. For the longest time, design has always been about impact. And at some point somewhere, someone forgot that. And we focused a lot on how things look and less about how things function. But also we forgot about the people that we're designing for the stakeholders who consume the products and services that we design. And DI is resurrecting that hope and that mission that we can design products and services that match user needs. It's been a great platform to learn. You see, this is something totally different from what we are accustomed to as design. Our assumption is a designer is behind your machine, get instructions, and then you do output, something colorful, and that's it. But then this changes everything the dynamics. Before you do any of your designs, it needs to be informed by something, by a learning or a finding. It's been very empowering for me, uh, like learning that there are basic processes that you need to follow before you actually get to a product or a solution idea. And all this is informed by you actually going out and talking to people. But the most interesting thing about this experience is it can work in any field. You can go to a bank and they will be like, I need a customer experience designer. Because you're launching this app. With the skills I have, I qualify for that position. Two, you can go to the health sector. What you're doing right now with uh, Project 121 is in regards to the health sector. With an open mind, I'm sure the opportunities are quite immense. Wherever I am, I hope I'm creating an impact, not for today. I want to work on things that will last a lifetime. I'm looking past the idea of me making a product or a solution or a service that suits my community. Our world is being opened up to so many possibilities. Like we are the change that we need to actually effect all that we want. And it starts with me and you other guys. Designers have to understand that our skill is very essential for growth of products and services, for the efficiency of products and services, for the feasibility of products and services. And without using design to make these products or services better, we'll still have the same redundant um, products and services out there. I want to use my Nairobi, Kenya, Africa as my canvas. I have contacts. And there's so many things you're going through and challenges that can be solved by design. For instance, I, I think about our traffic, how we don't have enough spaces for pedestrians, and all those kind of things. And I'm, I'm like, you know what, all these things, they can be approached by use of design. I think the beauty about NDI at this point is there's a chance to design for the bottom billion users. So I think going forward, I, maybe for the next couple of years, that's what I would want to work on projects that create impact for the bottom million users, so create value for that, that very particular segment.